in Philadelphia's Walnut Street Theater, the second series of face-to-face -face presidential debates in U.S. history will begin. Good evening. I'm Edwin Newman, moderator of this first debate of the 1976 campaign between Gerald R. Ford of Michigan, Republican candidate for president, and Jimmy Carter of Georgia, Democratic candidate for president. Mr. President, at Vail, after the Republican convention, you announced that you would now emphasize five new areas. Among those were jobs and housing and health, and improved recreational facilities for Americans, and you also added crime. You also mentioned education. But, sir, in the next few years, would you try to reduce the deficit? Would you spend money for these programs that you have just outlined, or would you, as you said earlier, return whatever surplus you got to the people in the form of tax relief? We feel that uh, with the programs that I have recommended, the additional $10 billion tax cut, with the moderate increases in the quality of life area, we feel that you can hold the line and restrain federal spending, give a tax reduction, and still have a balanced budget by 1978. Governor Carter. Well, Mr. Ford takes the uh, same attitude that the Republicans always take. In the last three months before an election, they're always for the programs that they fight the other three and a half years. Uh, I remember when you know, Herbert Hoover was against uh, jobs for people. I remember when Alf Landon was against Social Security. And uh, later, President Nixon, 16 years ago, was telling the public that John Kennedy's proposals would bankrupt the country and would double the cost. The best thing to do is to look at the record uh, of Mr. Ford's administration and, and Mr. Nixon's before his. Uh, we had last year a $65 billion deficit, the largest deficit in the history of our country. More of a deficit spending than we had in the entire eight-year period under President Johnson and President Kennedy. We've got 500,000 more Americans out of jobs today than we're out of work three months ago. And since Mr. Ford's been in office in two years, we've had a 50% increase in unemployment. This debate takes place before an audience in the Palace of Fine Arts Theater in San Francisco. An estimated 100 million Americans are watching on television as well. Mr. President, I'd like to explore a little more deeply our relationship with the Russians. Our allies in France and Italy are now flirting with communism. We've recognized a permanent communist regime in East Germany. We've virtually signed in Helsinki an agreement that the Russians have dominance in Eastern Europe. We bailed out Soviet agriculture with our huge grain sales. We've given them large loans, access to our best technology. Is that what you call a two-way street of traffic in Europe? I believe that we have uh, negotiated with the Soviet Union since I've been president from a position of strength. There is no Soviet domination of Eastern Europe, and there never will be under a Ford administration. Could I just follow? Did I understand you to say, sir, that the Russians are not using Eastern Europe as their own sphere of influence and occupying? I don't believe that the Romanians consider themselves dominated by the Soviet Union. I don't believe that the Poles consider themselves dominated by the Soviet Union. Each of those countries is independent, autonomous. We've also seen a very serious uh, problem with the so-called Sonnenfeld document, which apparently Mr. Ford has just endorsed, which said that there's an organic linkage between the Eastern European countries and the Soviet Union. And I would like to see Mr. Ford convince the Polish Americans and the Czech Americans and the Hungarian Americans in this country that those countries don't live under the domination and supervision of the Soviet Union behind the Iron cur uh, Curtain. From Williamsburg, Virginia, with the election seemingly so close now, it is entirely possible that tonight will give one candidate an advantage the other cannot overcome in the time remaining, only 10 days from now till the election. For 25 years, I served in the Congress under five presidents. I saw them work. I saw them make very hard decisions. I didn't always agree with their decisions, whether they were Democratic or Republican presidents. For the last two years, I've been the president, and I have found from experience that it's much more difficult to make those decisions than it is to second-guess them. 
I've been proud to be President of the United States during these very troubled times. I love America just as all of you love America. It would be the highest honor for me to have your support on November 2nd and for you to say, Jerry Ford, you've done a good job. Keep on doing it. Mr. Ford is a good and decent man, but he's been in office now more than 800 days, approaching almost as long as John Kennedy was in office. I'd like to ask the American people what, what's been accomplished. A lot remains to be done. I believe in the greatness of our country. And I believe the American people are ready for a change in Washington. We've been drifting too long. We've been dormant too long. We've been discouraged too long. And we have not set an example for our own people. But I believe that we can now establish in the White House a good relationship with Congress, a good relationship with our people, set very high goals for our country, and with inspiration and hard work, we can achieve great things and let the world know that's very important. But more importantly, let the people in our own country realize that we still live in the greatest nation on earth.